What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to read their poker hand every single time. Just do this, let's jump right into it. All right guys, so before I get started, I just need to point out that it is not actually possible to read their poker hand every single time. In fact, in the modern era of poker, professional poker players do not even think in terms of reading a specific poker hand, they think in terms of a range instead. And I'm gonna walk you through it all in today's video, step by step with several hand examples showing you how to use this simple method versus every single player type. So guys, that is really where we need to start off in terms of understanding someone's hand someone's range is you need to know the five basic poker player types. Now these are knit, tag, lag, whale, and maniac. If you don't know any of these player types and what they refer to, I would recommend downloading my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below where I talk about the various player types in more detail. But we're also gonna discuss it in today's video because everything revolves around the player type in poker. Every decision that you make, guys, at the poker table depends on what type of player you're up against. All right, guys, so let's jump into an example here to help illustrate all of this better for you. So this is gonna be from a $1, $2 cash game. This will apply if you play tournaments as well. We're gonna talk about a very common situation that you probably find yourself in. So you're dealt ace, queen, offsuit, ace of diamonds, queen of spades. In middle position, you raise it up to $6, and lo and behold, a knit re-raises you to $20 on the button. What should you be doing? Well, number one, we need to realize we're going to be out of position in this hand, meaning that we are going to be first to act on the flop, turn, and river. I hope some of you savvy poker players out there already notice that, because if you watch my videos here on the channel, by the way, make sure you subscribe. You know that when we're in position versus out of position makes a big difference towards our decision making throughout the hand. But let's talk about the player type. Let's break down a knit in particular, their range. So what should you be doing in this spot? Well, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but you should be folding in this spot. I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but let's talk about why. Why do we do it versus this player type? And by the way, versus the other four player types we're gonna discuss in a moment, this hand's gonna play out very differently. But let's talk about the knit first. Number one, as we just mentioned, we are out of position not good in poker, massive statistically proven disadvantage at the poker tables. If you play online poker, you can just use a program like Poker Tracker and you can go see the cold hard evidence for yourself. You can filter inside the program for hands when you play in position versus out of position. You're gonna see that you're losing far more out of position than in position. So we always want to be more inclined to either lay it down or take the even more aggressive route of four betting, re-raising in this situation when we're out of position. But anyways, guys, we're up against a knit here. What do we know about knits? Number one, tightest player at the table, most passive player at the table. This is the type of player who's not screwing around when they three bet. It's the person that you barely notice at the poker table because they're sitting there waiting for aces or kings. If you play online poker, they're playing 10 tables at once. Bottom line, guys, they're not picking on you out of the blue here. Their range in this situation, if we're going to read their poker hand, is literally jacks plus, meaning pocket jacks, pocket queens, pocket kings, pocket aces, and ace king. Now you don't need to be any kind of math genius at all to understand that ace queen does very, very poorly against this range. In fact, it's literally suicide to call here with ace queen or to re-raise is even more bonkers because this hand has absolutely terrible equity versus that range. So guys, please just save yourself some money and versus this particular player type, we can literally read their hand like a book here and fold this hand. Let's talk about player type number two now. So now we're gonna talk about the tag tight and aggressive player type and versus this player, things change quite a bit. You should call or occasionally four bet, AKA re-raising with your ace queen in this situation. Number one, tags are one of the biggest winners in the game. I talk about this in all of my poker books. In fact, this is the play style that I recommend and teach and everything that I put out. By the way, for all of my poker books and training videos, you can find that all linked up in the description below. And the reason why tags are among the biggest winners, almost 
almost always is because they have well-balanced ranges in every single situation. It's hard to read their poker hand. So in a situation like this, where we raised ace-queen from middle position, remember, and we get three bets on the button by a tag here, they're gonna have a well-balanced range here, preflop, of stuff like sevens plus. So it's gonna be pocket sevens, pocket eights, pocket nines, all the way up to pocket aces. Ace-jack suited, ace-queen and ace-king. They're gonna have a few suited connectors, like maybe a nine eight of hearts, and a couple suited aces, like maybe an ace four of spades. So basically, bottom line, these players mix up their range as well, and that's why they win so much, and that makes it very difficult to read their poker hand, but with ace-queen versus this range, we should be calling, we're going to be a slight favorite versus this range, and I do think we should mix in some four bets as well from time to time, just to make ourselves more difficult to play against and to keep these players guessing. Let's move on now to player type number three, which is everybody's favorite, the lag, loose and aggressive player type. Now, this kind of player is another regular, just like the tank, and in this situation, again, we raise ace-queen offsuit from middle position, and we're gonna assume a lag player, three bets us on the button, we should be calling, but also sometimes four betting with this hand. I'll say that I actual four bet with a slightly higher frequency in this situation versus the lag in contrast to versus the tank. And the reason why is because lags are very, capable of mixing up their three betting ranges and I would say some of the legs especially in the smaller stakes games uh, they're a little bit too bluff heavy at times so let's talk about the legs range here often they're gonna show up with any pocket pair here so twos plus ace ten suited ace jack suited ace queen ace king once again several suited connectors and several suited aces while a loose and aggressive player is a regular they're not like you know recreational players we're gonna discuss in a second you want to get Give them some respect you know they're not playing total trash here you also need to understand guys that lags are definitely veering into the wilder side and so that's why i say within this situation i'm probably calling around 75 percent of the time probably repopping them the other 25 percent of the time let's move on to player type number four now which is the whale now, the whale is one of two recreational player types. These are the people that we make the money from in poker. Hope you guys all know that. So what should we be doing in this spot? We raise ace queen in middle position. We get repopped by a whale who's on the button. How do we read their hand in this situation? Well, we should just be calling in this spot. Now, something that a lot of people kind of confuse versus the whale player type. The whale, by the way, is the player who's playing way, way too many hands, okay? Often limping in there with any thing at all like any two cards that look remotely pretty to them but what a lot of people don't understand is that these players actually are not very aggressive at all compared to our other recreational player type which we're going to discuss in a moment whales are the passive recreational player type guys they don't three bet you with total garbage very often a lot of times when they three bet you it's because they actually have a really strong hand sometimes they do it with some complete nonsense 10 six off suit just for something to do but a lot of the time they really do have the ace king they really do have the pocket kings the pocket queens it is important that we respect them a little bit when they three bet us but we still want to be calling i'm literally calling 100 percent by the way in this situation here because they play so badly post-flop that even though we're going to be out of position, as we already discussed earlier in the video, we can still easily turn a profit versus these players. And by the way, I have dozens and dozens of examples of this in my brand new Black Rain 79 Elite Poker Training University, 17 plus hours of advanced and some simple poker strategy as well, walking you through how to play optimally versus all five of these player types with hundreds of hand history examples dozens and dozens of cheat sheets walking you step by step through exactly what hands to play and how to play them in every single situation there'll be links for that in the description below you can enroll right now but bottom line guys there's no point actually in trying to guess the range trying to put a recreational player quote unquote on a hand because they're playing half the deck that's what whales do they literally play 50 percent of all hands that are dealt to them but once again you know if you're playing online just use a program like poker tracker and you can see that the whales three bat percentage is quite low so the best play by far is just to call here let's move on to the final player type now which is the maniac 
This is the often inebriated player that you might see at your tables on a Friday, Saturday night. They're playing literally every single hand, but in comparison to the whale, they're also raising and re-raising, of course, with almost every single hand as well. We call this player a maniac for a reason. So the first question you need to ask yourself is how much variance do you want? You know, because we can play this hand several different ways. And by variance, by the way, what I mean by that is that sort of the short-term luck roller coaster that we're all on in poker, we can choose to play this hand slow or we can choose to play it a little bit fast and ride the roller coaster a little bit more so in this situation I would say that I'm probably about 50 50 in terms of calling and for betting folding is never happening versus this kind of player who's playing half the deck and raising with literally anything obviously ace queen is going to be well well ahead of this player's range here so there's no real point in trying to guess this player's range often you just want to get Get involved in the pot with them. You can either raise for value right now or just call. And suffice it to say, if an ace or a queen comes on the flop, I'm probably going to be getting all the money in versus this kind of player type. Once again, they call them a maniac for a reason. So guys, this is how you read their poker hand. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how I analyze ranges at the table versus the different player types. That's the, really the biggest point of the video, guys. You need to understand understand the five basic player types in order to accurately put people on a range of hands and narrow down their likely actual hands in the situation. Then you can make the best decision versus them. But anyways, guys, make sure you like and subscribe if you found this one helpful. And once again, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.